Senator from Oklahoma. Mr. President, I ask you to ask consent the quorum call and process uh, be vitiated. Without objection. Mr. President, I uh, just want to make it, I ask you to have consent that I be recognized as if in uh, morning business for 12 minutes. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, I have come to the floor over the past several years, countless times, talking about the resource that we have called Guantanamo Bay. It's uh, people refer to it as Gitmo. And for some reason, and I, I was distressed uh, about some of the statements that our president has said in his Cairo speech when he made the comment that we're going to close Gitmo and we're going to make sure there's no more torture. I have to say to you, Mr. President, there's never been one documented case of torture in Guantanamo Bay. It's just ludicrous that people would say this and respond. Every time I talk to someone who says we've got to close Guantanamo Bay and you ask them what the reason for that is, they turn around and they say, well, it's because uh, the, the people in the Middle East and some people in Europe think that there's torture that's been going on. It goes back to the Abu Ghraib thing. This had nothing to do with Abu Ghraib. There's never been a case, a documented case of torture. And let's look at this resource that we have. We got Gitmo in 1903. It's one of the best bargains we've had in government because we only pay $4,000 a year for this thing. And it is a state-of-the-art prison. We don't have anything in the United States that is as secure and is as humane as Gitmo is. I mean, they have this, this ratio of doctors to, uh, to detainees of two to one. Uh, the same with legal uh, help. And I've been down there several times. And if you talk to the ones who won't be throwing something at you, uh, they will tell you they've never had food and treatment as good as they've had down there. I can't imagine we take a resource like that and, and, uh, and close it down and bring some 200 or 240 terrorists to the United States. And yet that's exactly what the president's talking about doing. I was shocked, Mr. President, when I picked up the newspaper on Monday morning and saw that uh, Amon Gilani, who was the terrorist who bombed the, the, uh, uh, the embassies in Tanzania and Kenya, and that he was actually brought to the United States. He's in New York today. I didn't know about it until we read it in the newspaper. He's going to, I guess, be adjudicated or go to trial in, uh, in, in our court system. And here's the problem we have with that. These people in Guantanamo Bay are terrorist detainees. These are not criminals. These are not people that committed a crime. They are not people that the normal rules of evidence would apply to. In fact, most of these, the rules of evidence that, that was, were, were assumed that they would be in military tribunals. And of course, those rules are different than they are in our court system. Now, what's gonna happen when you have some of the worst uh, terrorists in the world coming up and in, in, in getting tried in our system and we find out they have to be acquitted because the rules of evidence are not what they were during the time that that they were brought into custody. So we have this, this opportunity down there, this resource that we've used since 1903, and it is the only place in the world that we can actually put detainees. Now, the president and has, has said that there are some 17 prisons in the United States that we can incarcerate these people. I would suggest to you, and I don't think anyone's gonna refute this, if you did that, you'd have 17 magnets for terrorism. One of the places they suggested happened to be Fort Oklahoma. And I have to tell you that I went down to Fort Sill. There's a young lady there who's a sergeant major in charge of our prison at Fort Sill. And uh, she said, what is wrong with those people in Washington? What's wrong with the president thinking that we can incarcerate terrorists here in Oklahoma? This young lady was also a sergeant major in Guantanamo just a few uh, months ago. And she went back and she said, that is the greatest facility. There's no place where we could replicate that thing. And she said, on top of that, we have the courtroom that was built. We spent 12 months and $12 million spending uh, on a courtroom where we could have tri mil military tribunals. And they were going on and the president, President Obama, ordered them to stop and he wanted to bring them to the United States to be adjudicated here. This is, this is outrageous. I've heard people on the Senate floor talk about how bad uh, Guantanamo Bay is. They'll never be specific. They'll never talk about what is wrong with, 
with Guantanamo Bay. What are they doing? Are they torturing people? No. Are they being mistreated? No. Uh, there are six levels of security, and when you're dealing with, with uh, terrorist detainees, you have to put them in areas where the, 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 the level of their uh, activity is greater and requires more or less security, and we have that opportunity to do it there. No place else in America, no place else in the world can they do that. Now they say, well, now over in Afghanistan, and by the way, I have to say this, it's not just 245 detainees that we have to deal with there. It's, uh, it's worse than that because in Afghanistan, with the surge that's taking place right now, that uh, there are going to be more detainees. And they'll say, well, there are two major prisons, Bagram and I can't remember the other one, in, uh, in, um, uh, in Afghanistan. And they could be incarcerated there. And say, no, they won't because they won't accept any detainees that are not from Afghanistan. So if they're from Djibouti or from Saudi Arabia or someplace else, uh, they, they have to, we have to have a place to put them. Uh, or else you turn them loose or else you execute them. I don't, you know, a lot of these people who think that they shouldn't be incarcerated in, a, in a, a, any prison at all, you have to keep in mind you can't turn them loose on society. These are people that are not normal people like uh, normal criminals. First of all, they have no fear of death themselves. It's just ingrained in them. These are people who want to kill all of us. And so we're talking about very dangerous people. And I'm very much concerned. I did not believe that our President Obama would go through with bringing terrorists to the United States. I didn't think that was going to happen. And yet I picked up the paper Monday morning, and there he is, uh, Ahmed Ghilani, one of the worst terrorists around, the one who killed 244 people, many of them were Americans, in Tanzania, in, in uh, Kenya. And uh, this is something that I know the American people don't want. And I would hope that many of my good Democrat friends are not going to line up and support Obama in bringing these terrorists to the United States. It's something that is not something uh, is, you know, may, I guess I'm prejudiced. I have 20 kids and grandkids, and I don't want a bunch of terrorists uh, in this country uh, where they're subjected to that type of thing. The fact that they would be magnets. There's no doubt in the mind of this uh, Sergeant Major Carter down at Fort Sill that if we put them down there, that they would be in a position to, to uh, where, where they would draw terrorist activity to my state of Oklahoma. By the way, it's interesting that some, I think there are 27 now states, uh, state legislatures who have passed uh, resolutions saying that they don't want any of the detainees located in their states. Well, that I can assure you that every one of the 17 proposed sites that w would house these people are, are uh, sites where uh, the detainees uh, would, uh, the, where they have passed uh, resolutions saying we don't want them there. So I would only say this. If you go down there in the press, particularly the liberal press, who's always talking about how bad things are and we have to close Gitmo, get more, get more, you find that those people have never been there. Almost without exception, I don't know of one exception, where if they've gone down there and they've seen how humanely people are treated, they've seen a resource down there that we can't replicate any place in the United States, they come back shaking their heads saying, what's wrong with keeping Gitmo open? I have to say, even Al Jazeera went down there. And that's, that's a Middle Eastern uh, network. They went down and they had to admit publicly that the treatment was better there than it is in any of the prisons that they're familiar with. Abu Ghraib was a different situation. Yes, some of our troops were involved in that. There was a level, most people wouldn't call it torture. It's more humiliation than anything else. But nonetheless, they did that. But the interesting thing about Abu Ghraib is that prior to the time that the public was aware that was going on, the army had already come in and done their, started their discipline and had stopped that type of thing from taking place. But even if it weren't, for people to think, just because there was something in their minds that it was torture that was going on in upgrade, to even suggest that that was going on in Guantanamo Bay is, is totally fictitious. So I would only say I've, I've been privileged to take several members down with me to see this firsthand. And I, I think that before we should, every member of this body, this United States Senate, should have to go down and see for himself or herself what is really going on down there. We can't afford 
to, uh, to take a chance on turning terrorists loose in the United States. And the polling that came out just this morning showed that by a margin of three to one, people do not want to close Guantanamo Bay. We got to keep Gitmo open. And I think it's, uh, I, I was just, again, I would just wind up by saying I was in a state of shock when I found out that, uh, that, um, that one of the worst terrorists that was incarcerated down there was brought back to face justice in our court system in New York. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Let's suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. 